welcome to Let's Wine About It. If you are new here, my name is Elise, and on my channel, we talk all things wine and all things that make you want to grab a glass of wine. If you are returning, hey girl, hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, y'all, so let's get into it. Um, well, first, let me acknowledge that yes i am sitting on the floor switched it up today i actually broke the leg on my little camera holder and so i'm on the floor today but actually i think i kind of like it it's like i feel comfortable i feel like i'm you know just sitting down in the living room chatting it up with my girls um it's kind of a vibe so I may keep it like this, like casual. Um, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments if you like the on the floor, just chilling kind of setup or not. Y'all may see me back here. I got my little table here so I can have my glass of wine. Any notes that I want are right here. It's kind of a nice little setup. I think I like it. Anyway, we are at the end of the first month of a new year. So we made it, y'all. If y'all were doing dry January, we got like two more days left. I'm doing dry January. Don't know why I decided to sign up for that, but hey, we're here now. I did it. Um, but yeah, like we are at the end of the month. And for a lot of people, we usually start to kind of fall off at this point around week three, week four. Um, start to feel a little less motivated than we did at the top of the year. Life is starting to happen. So I thought it would be good to kind of talk about some ways that I have found that have helped me stay consistent and um, also use this video as a reminder to myself to keep going. I found something that I feel like is working for me and I wanna share it with y'all and leave it for myself to come back to. Even if you don't do New Year's resolutions, it's kind of like natural that you start your year off kind of evaluating and taking stock of where you are and where you wanna be. And um, a lot of people can kind of get discouraged as you move throughout the year if you have a goal setting mindset. And this, this really has been like the metamorphosis for me is, is changing um, that verbiage and that um, ideology. I don't think in terms of goals, right? So but what that means is like, instead of saying I wanna lose you know, 20 pounds, or I want to read 10 books by the end of the year. Instead of doing that, I think about the person that I want to be. There are two things that happen when you think in terms of goal setting is what happens after you reach that goal, after you lose the 20 pounds, or after you've completed um, the 10 books, you lose a lot of that motivation um, to continue because you've reached the goal. It's not uh, sustainable, right? So, and it can be very defeatist. For example, if your goal was to lose 20 pounds and you only lost 10, you kind of feel like you failed, right? Um, ignoring the progress that you did make um, and that can cause you to backtrack. So instead of thinking about goals, I think about who I want to be and behaving in in that way. Through this video, I wanna, I'm wanna i gonna reference like a couple of things that have helped me in my journey to become the person and I wanna be and do the things to become that person. And one is this book here, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It is a very well-known book. You've probably read it. If you haven't read it, you've probably heard about it or seen it somewhere. Someone posted it, always gets really popular at the beginning of the year um, because it's all about creating habits and, you know, um, creating good habits and um, destroying bad habits. Um, and so a lot of people read this at the top of the year, but it's so popular because it is, it's like just chocked full of life gems. So I'm gonna reference this a lot. Um, in addition to me referencing therapy 
therapy and this book go hand in hand um, in creating the lifestyle that you want for yourself. If you're thinking about who you want to be, you wanna also think about who you currently are and how you became who you currently are. So what is your identity? And your identity emerges out of your habits, the things that you do day in and day out. If you read every single day, you may identify as a reader. If you wake up every single morning and you go running, you see yourself or you can identify yourself as a runner. You are a runner. It is a part of who you are. It is what you do every single day. So whatever your identity is now, you believe it because you have proof of it. The more evidence you have, the stronger the belief that you are this person that is your identity. This is something that happens not overnight. It's something that gradually happens over the course of someone's life. Little behaviors repeatedly um, showing proof to you that you are this person. Well, the best way to change an identity or to change um, who you are is through action, is through repeated behavior. This was like a big aha moment for me. Um, and they touch on this, they touch on that like thought and concept in the book. Um, and they relate it to casting a vote for your future self. Every time you act in a way that is um, that gives proof or evidence to this person that you want to be, you're casting a vote for that person. That future self, like the, the person you want to run your life and um, live your life to the fullest, when you start incorporating behaviors and activities that align with that identity, you're casting a vote for, for your future self. And this goes hand in hand with letting go of the idea of setting a goal uh, for yourself, uh, but instead practicing being the person that you want to be. So instead of saying, I'm going to work out for four days out of the week because I wanna lose 20 pounds, I say, I'm working out four days out of the week because I am a fit and healthy person. Um, I don't read 10 pages a day because I want to complete 10 books by the end of the year. I read 10 pages a day because I am a reader. So then the accomplishment isn't that you lost 10 pounds, the accomplishment is that you have proof that you are a fit and healthy person because you have consistently demonstrated that behavior um, regardless of what the scale says and regardless of you know what size you're wearing you're consistently showing up as the as that person and so the goal is to is to continue to have these um, habits and behaviors that um, are proof and evidence that you are the person that you want to be that's the mindset shift now that sounds easier said than done um so how do you how do you do that like if it was that easy you could just say hey i'm a fit and healthy person and and the switch goes off and all of a sudden you're running you know five miles a day before you're able to really start thinking what are the habits that i need to start doing to cast that vote for my future self you really need to understand what that what you want that future self um to be like who do you want to be and i and that's where the therapy comes in understanding why you want to be that person um how you became the person that you currently are and why you know certain things are important to you help kind of one solidify and provide motivation to become that person um, and then it also allows you to be a little kinder to yourself and um, how you become the person that you are to appreciate the person that you are and then also identify triggers that are roadblocks to becoming who you want to be one of the things about therapy that i think people who are like on the fence about it um or don't really buy into it I, one of the things that i think they don't realize therapy does 
is it's not like someone solving all your problems or telling you you have issues or anything like that. They really kind of give you just the tools to understand yourself and identify triggers and and then it's up to you like now that you understand and know why and how you got here you can better navigate you know how to continue doing something how to stop doing something or just understanding why goes a long way in managing like your emotions or re or changing your perspective of the world and other people so whether you're going through something or not, or are sad or happy, I think therapy is a really great tool to just change your perspective about yourself, about the world, and kind of um, provide motivation um, to continue growing um, and being a more evolved person. I say all that to say that therapy can help you understand your triggers, and your triggers are oftentimes what create habits um, your mind and your body um, are constantly going through a cycle of learning you know when this happens and you react this way something good happens when this happens and you react that way something bad happens in your body and your mind learns and mo motivates you consciously or unconscious to continue to do those things. Um, that is how habits are formed. So when you understand your triggers or cues that create these habits, you're better able to remove those or increase those to um, increase certain behaviors and habits, if that makes sense. For example, when you are stressed, um, you may come home and turn on the television and then you become less stressed. So in that action, your body has learned, I feel stressed when I turn this television on, I felt less stressed. So the next time that you're feeling stressed, you now, that, it, that now has become a trigger or a cue for you to turn the TV on. The more you're aware of it, the more you're able to kind of control those triggers, understand why you're doing them and modify them. So anyway, so that is where I feel like if you're really trying to make a life, a lifestyle shift, therapy can do nothing but help you because you'll understand how and why you're doing what you're doing to begin with and you're better equipped to change it when you see it happening. This book really breaks habit uh, forming and changing down into a very like concise list. I'm going to share that list with you and how I've implemented it in my life to make my behaviors more consistent and cast more votes for that person, that future self that I want to be. This book talks about four laws of creating new habits. The first is make it obvious. The second is make it attractive. Third is make it easy. Fourth is make it satisfying. Using words like easy and obvious and satisfying and attractive, those words aren't typically associated with changing your lifestyle, right? Usually you hear words like hard work, determination, dedication, um, motivation, all those words like that, which entail, you know, work and difficulty. But these steps, are all about how you can easily integrate small changes in your life to create this big lifestyle change, just like every other thing in your life. The person who you are today did not just like manifest overnight with like really hard work. No, it was a series of continual actions that created this person and created these habits that you have. And that's the same thing that it's gonna take to create the new version of yourself. So um, in a consistent way, in a way that's going to have lasting effects, right? So first law is make it obvious. So I do want to um, be a, a fit and healthy person. And that includes mentally, physically, and spiritually. So how can I incorporate um, behaviors that cast votes for a mentally, physically, and spiritually healthy person? Um, and so 
one of those things is making sure that I am taking my vitamins every single day. I've done all the things, researched the best vitamins, bought all the things at the water bottles and the pill dispenser, um, but I couldn't stay consistent in making sure that I was taking my vitamins every day. Because I was missing the first law, which is make it obvious. So how do you make something obvious? One of the best ways to do that is by habit stacking, which is incorporating a new habit into habits that you already do every single day. For example, every morning without fail, I, I have a routine. It's so automatic. I don't even think about it. I wake up, I say a prayer of thanks. I brush my teeth. I do my whole facial routine and then I make my bed and then make coffee. Sometimes like it's so automatic that I walk back in my room and I'm like, when did I make my bed? I don't even, I don't even realize that I've done it. So those are prime opportunities to start incorporating other good habits by habit stacking. So for example, when I go to get my coffee, I have my little vitamin pill box right by my coffee pods. I can't even open my coffee pods unless I'm moving my vitamin pill out of the way. So it's obvious, it is a trigger. I'm gonna get coffee, oh, I gotta take my vitamins. I have to get the water out of the fridge to put in the Keurig. And so while I'm doing that, I'm pouring the water to take my vitamins, which also is creating another habit of drinking eight ounces of water first thing in the morning. By integrating the vitamins into something that I'm already doing, it too is becoming, you know, habitual with is and becoming automatic, and it doesn't feel like um, I'm not going out of my way to do this new thing. Um, it's seamlessly incorporated into my morning routine. Probably for me, what has been the most I guess influential law is make it easy. When we start creating new habits, we have all this motivation and we like kind of bite off more than we can choose making these lofty goals for ourselves. Um, we are starting from zero and going to 100 because in the beginning we're super motivated and we have all the energy in the world. Um, but we what we wanna do again is rem Remember, the goal is to create habits that are sustainable, that cast votes for that future self. So, for example, saying that you want to go to the gym five days out of the week and work out for 30 minutes to an hour. On a day where you are struggling, getting into the gym to do a 30 minute to an hour a workout can seem impossible and so you don't do it at all. Whereas if your goal is to just make it to the gym, like that's it. That's all you have to do is just go to the gym. That's it and, and set no other requirements um, for yourself you're going to see more consistent behaviors that cast that vote for that future self. So on your worst day, <laughs> on your worst day, you can say, I at least went to the gym. Whether or not you were there for 30 minutes to an hour, it doesn't matter because the goal is to be someone that goes to the gym every single day. Now, when you start to do that, when you when you start off with the very basics and the ult the goal is only to make sure that you are someone who is showing up, is showing up. That's it, is to show up. Once you're there, you're going to do something. <laughs> you're going to do something which is better than nothing. And that is the whole point. Um, is to not fall off and to not go backwards and to not not do it at all. Think about your very worst day um, and plan for that self. So for me, in terms of workout, I make it obvious and I make it attractive um, by two things. Um, every night, 
before I go to bed, I turn on my workout video. I have it already on my television. So when I wake up in the morning, it is right there. It is on um, and ready for me to just hit play and, and work out. I don't have to search through my phone. It's a trigger. It's a reminder that you have to work out this morning. It's already on my television. Then I make it attractive. So I already have my workout clothes laid out for myself. I make sure that the workout clothes that I wear are, are something that I feel good in, that I think I look cute in. Um, so I'm making it attractive for myself. Like I look, I look good, I feel good in it. I look like somebody who works out in these clothes. And that is my only goal is when you wake up in the morning, you put these workout clothes on. That's that's it. You you put the workout clothes on, you put your little heart monitor on. That is the goal every morning. Then when I come out of my room, I look up at my TV, there's the reminder to work out. The video is already on. All I literally have to do is press play. And so even on the days that I feel terrible, like I make sure that I do that. Once I do that, once those things are done, it automatically, I'm, I'm going to do something. I end up working, even if it's a half-ass workout, I still end up working out. One, I'm looking at myself. I got these workout clothes on. I look like somebody who's about to work out who does work out like the pants are fitting right like I look good and I kind of and I feel good um in those clothes and so even on even on like the bad day when I really just don't feel like it I have all these triggers and all these things happening around me that are making it more likely to come to do a full workout um, and all of this, all of it, the make it easy, make it attractive, make it obvious, is just being intentional in your present self and setting your future self up for success. And these aren't like big, huge things. These are small little things that you're doing that are creating um, habits that will benefit you for a lifetime. For me, and they talk about this in the book and it's something that works really well for me, tracking, um, ticking something off, like that speaks to my soul. Like I have um, so many things set up in um, my everyday life where I can track my activity and um, have the satisfaction of checking something off. So for example, every time that I work out, um, regardless of whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, I X off a day on my calendar on my refrigerator. I put that X there and it immediately sends me a shot of dopamine and endorphins. Like I get a rush out, out of looking at all the little tick boxes on my calendar. Every time I open up my little vitamin box and I see all the rolls gone, I'm on Saturday and I only have one little box left, it's satisfying to me to see like that progress of me consistently taking my vitamins consistently like not skipping a day creating and understanding what gives you satisfaction and incorporating that into your new habits is paramount that kind of gives you the boost to continue um, to not break the streak to continue doing what you're doing is by creating a um, a little dopamine hit for yourself every time you complete a task that has been working for me I have already seen so many benefits to th those small lifestyle changes uh, I am only measuring how I feel and how consistent I'm being in those um, behavior. So I'm not looking at the scale. I've kind of focused this more so on like my health, my physical health, but I want to be more consistent in focusing on my financial, spiritual, mental, and physical health all around. And so there are things that I have incorporated in my everyday life that touch on all of that. Um, without setting like this hard numeric goal for myself. And I am already seeing 
just the benefits and the way that I feel. It's been very eye-opening, it's been very encouraging. And um, again, I'm making this video today to encourage you guys to hopefully find, um, use the same method to find out what works for you um, and stay consistent with it throughout the entire year. Now is your turn. Let me know what's been working for you staying consistent in your goals and your lifestyle changes. Or let me know if there's anything that I shared with y'all today that really resonated with you. Uh, that's it guys. I have been on dry January all month so I haven't done as many like wine reviews I haven't done any wine reviews in the last like 40 days so my next video going up will be a wine review I am really excited about it make sure you guys tune in for that if there's a particular wine that you want me to review and taste definitely drop that there I'll be happy to um, include that in my next video um, but that's it guys thank y'all so much for chatting with me and until next time I'm gonna get my little water here it's in a solo cup so I'm kind of like making it attractive. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>